Chris Johnson and Pete Kurtzel here from MassInSports.com. Again, live from the baseball winter meetings here at the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Pete, the official day one of the winter meetings here. And we had a chance to speak with Nationals General, Man General Manager Mike Rizzo uh, a few hours ago. And chief topic was... The news that came down late last night that Jonathan Papelbon has filed a grievance against the Nationals uh, after not getting paid during his four-game suspension at the end of the season, which obviously was the result of his brawl with Bryce Harper in the Nationals' dugout. Uh, that was our first topic of conversation with Mike Rizzo earlier today. Wow, and boy did it dovetail from there. Among the things that we talked about was the fact that Mike Rizzo said that Jonathan Papelbon would be welcomed back in. He, he still sees potentially Drew Storen and Jonathan Papelbon as a dynamite eighth inning, ninth inning combination. Really wouldn't talk much about the uh, grievance, said that they've been told not to talk about it, which really is standard operating procedure. But what do you, what do you make of the idea of Jonathan Papelbon coming back to the Nationals potentially when all we've heard is that man, this is a marriage that isn't going to work out. I don't buy it, Pete. Uh, no way possible. I don't see how this team could go into spring training with a new manager, Dusty Baker, uh, and having to deal with the distractions of what happened between Papelbon and Bryce Harper. I think it's going to be the question that will be asked over and over and over again, and I don't think that that's what you want heading into spring training with brand new season, brand new manager. Uh, I, I can't see any way that the learners will allow this embarrassment to hang over top of the Nationals. Rizzo said that there has been interest in Papelbon. Uh, given what other teams know where the situation that they're in, probably not wanting to bring him back at all, uh, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be for them to trade him. I don't think they are going to be able to trade him. I've, I've spent a lot of time prowling the lobby today here at the Gaylord Opryland uh, Resort and Convention Center. Two things are consistent with almost every scout and executive that I've talked to. They won't be able to trade Papelbon straight up. There just is no market for him at the salary. So the Nationals are going to have to eat salary. And Rizzo said, surprisingly, that they are in a position where they can do that. Two, there's no way he can be back. There's just no way that can happen. Um, We've heard so much over the last few weeks about the Nationals wanting to remake their bullpen. Well, this is going to be a step-by-step -step process. I don't think they can go out and really trade Papelbon, possibly trade Drew Storen, until they have some reinforcements. And as to that, as far as that goes, it hasn't happened yet. Until that happens, they can't really make the second set of moves. And I think that's where we're sitting right now. It's been a very much a feeling out proposition over the last 24 hours here for the Nationals. Maybe something happens in the next few days, but it's been a kind of a, a quiet day here, save for the Rizzo conversation. Yeah, early on, uh, the Nationals, another one of their possible late inning relief targets uh, off the board again as Chapman, the Reds fireballer, ends up going to the Dodgers in a trade. And uh, that was, he was one of the guys, certainly, uh, the Nationals have his. been linked. Yeah. Exactly, a long history and someone that they thought could be a replacement uh, and a, a strong replacement uh, for Papelbon and Storen in the back end there. Another guy linked heavily to the Nationals is the super utility man, Ben Zobrist. He's also, they flirted with him last season around the trade deadline. Uh, this guy can play all over the field. Uh, we're talking about the Mets. We're talking about the Giants. The Dodgers were linked in there as well, but it, we're really talking about maybe the final three that the Nats are involved in for Zobris' services. And he's 35, going to be 35 in late May, and he's looking for four years in somewhere around the neighborhood of $60 million. That's a lot of money to pay for a guy of that age. But the one thing weighing in the Nationals' favor right now, Chris, he wants to play second base. That's what he wants to do. That's one of the reasons that the Dodgers really couldn't commit because they've got a lot of moving parts out in L.A. There's some talk that San Francisco can't commit to that, assuming they have Joe Panic coming back to play second base. The Mets and the Nationals right now can, can let him play second base. So maybe it just comes down to those two teams. If it does, the, the Nats want to make a big splash here. They want to do something important. And quite frankly, signing Ben Zobris to the contract that he wants – that would fall into the category of a major, major signing. 
Yeah, you could tell when we spoke with Mike Rizzo earlier today, he's definitely very interested in getting the services of Ben Zobrist. And he said they need they have a need at second base. So we, we know the situation in the middle of the infield with Anthony Rendon, the plan to send him back over to third base. Obviously, Ian Desmond's out with free agency. So there's a need there at shortstop and second base. He also mentioned that there's been a lot of interest in Yunel Escobar as well. Zobrist signing with D.C., if it happens, again, creates a ripple effect. It allows you now Escobar to be traded. It means that maybe you get another year or at least half a year of seasoning for Trey Turner. It means Danny Espinosa goes back to being either a shortstop or a utility infielder, depending on if they get somebody to play shortstop. So one move can be gotten many moves, and that's really what the baseball season's all about. We'll see what happens here as uh, we're concluding Day number one, the official day number one of the winter meetings. Day day number two, though, for, for us here at MassInSports.com. Uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow. Certainly check out MassInSports.com. What do you like to say, Pete? Log in, tune in. We'll see you at the ballpark.